um, chapter by chapter, character by character, um, a little bit of information about each one of them, plus a bit of background, so we're going, oh, I'll start, because I've only got five minutes. Uh, let's go. So, it starts with a family. It's a fucked up family. First of all, the daughter gets fucked by the dad. The mother is not happy. Who is the mother? It's not that bitch there. It's a terrible start. You can only wish that these guys had got there first. All of them sitting, judging, thinking they know what the fuck's going on up north. But they don't know. They've never been to Manchester. They've never been to Sheffield. Least of all, they don't even know where the fucking Pennines are. Bastard. Here is the answer to all their prayers. If only, if only, if only. But there is no angel of the north. Fuck that joke. What you have instead are people who stand by bus stops being betrayed and attacked by vicious girls in anoraks. Oh All is left on dark streets where rapists with knives and blood in their pockets walk around and you try and hide your face and you hope you haven't been seen and your hand flaps like a little bloody angel. There are no angels up north. What you have instead is a man of fear, full of fear, walking along, full and full and full. And he knows that there's only one thing you can do with fear, and that is terrorise everyone else. <laughs> so, upon the hills of the Pennines, the rabbits and hares sit in the dark, consumed by eternity. Eternity! It's coming! It's coming north, boys! But, nevertheless, there will be things swimming out at sea. You start on a blue day, the sun is shining, and nobody sees that big bastard black cloud coming. But it is coming, and you can swim as hard as you can. It'll get you in the end. Now then, it all gets quiet mid-novel. It's like something's happening on a boat that's too big for its own good, and it runs into a whale on that side, so there's a bit of blood on that side, whereas over here, Everything looks nice and placid and delightful and angelic. But as you know, there are no fucking angels in the north. And then, this is reality trapped within the walls of the north. The minor strike is on. Poverty is eating their souls. They pretend they are okay. But look at their miserable, gormless faces. That's what is happening. You might want to turn to the Russian poets. <laughs> <laughs> there he sits contemplating the pink snow. Tiepolo's pink. But you know, and he knows, and they know, there is no such pink. And there is no such snow that can make life better up north. This is more like it, you see. A landscape full of all the horrors that we can remember. There's a man being shot in the head from close range. You cannot miss. That's what you do. <laughs> There's a tree from which you can hang yourself if you can afford the rope. There is a concentration camp where you'll put everybody you despise and hate and let them go to the dogs. And up there, on the end, there's something else happening. A hanging tree and a soldier. They've come to get the miners. Fuck them all! Who is going to help? How are they going to get out of this mess, you ask yourself? Well, maybe there'll be a beautiful blonde with an ass the size of South Yorkshire. <laughs> maybe she will be looking out for us. 
But you know what? Every time I've been up there, I've never found them. But it's not for not for looking. <laughs> so what happens? You end up on a street scene like this. It's difficult even to stand. Let alone make it stand. Stand! <laughs> There's a guy there watching his house burn down. Who was in that room? We don't know. There's some boys here. They probably live there. They hate it. They're having to escape, but there's nowhere to run. He's trying to look calm, but he's not calm at all. And you know that by the end of the night, he'll be dead. This is all the women in South Yorkshire. And this is all the men. They're in little rooms, trapped about to jump. Some of them will jump. Others will be pushed. Others will stay there ready. For what, you ask? Well, there's only one thing left. The egg. The boiled egg. The breakfast boiled egg. <laughs> this is all we have left. The boiled egg, which has gods, naked and hairy, coming along and saying, boil your fucking egg. He says, he's drunk, he wishes he had his clothes on, but they never do up north. It's cold, it's frozen, and that's what they do. Meanwhile, mother, she says, have your eggs, because whatever happens, you need your sustenance. So, how does all this end? This is the book that you've just seen. It ends like this, with an old woman, her name, I've forgotten her name, Lavinia. I remembered it because I've read it. Here it comes. This is the end. Lavinia. Lavinia's fate is more awkward to explain than all that. Some say that something anonymous was drawn into her, she being like a vanishing point. And that she was therefore dragged away into the infinity of her own entrails with him, perishing together in a cubicle of everlasting scream. Fucking hell, hey, have a movie dick together. Others, however, claim that she was seen not long after the confrontation with this anonymous, hauling herself over the snow smothered waste of the peat moors, head covered with a mourning shawl, back stooped. Head sunk, dark grey coat to her knees, perhaps barefoot, an old woman traipsing on, a beauty in the winter void, swinging a pink plastic bag in one of her paws. So there are three comments there. They're over there, and you can have them at the end. First, 